Hello everyone and welcome back. This is our first tutorial of 2023 and you may kind of guess from our backdrop what our topic is going to start what our topic uh, is going to be starting off uh, this year. I uh, continue to get probably once or twice a week a comment or an email saying uh, can we put together a scoreboard for cricket. For the first set of tutorials in 2023 is going to be cricket. I started creating a cricket tutorial when I first began this channel, but I, I kind of backed myself in a corner. I took it as far as I could because to be quite honest, I'm not that versed uh, with cricket. So in order for me to get this set up totally complete, I'm gonna need some help from the subscribers. So what I'm going to do uh, this week and probably the next three or four tutorials is I'm going to, going to put out there what I've done and I'm going to show you how I've, I've put these graphics together and then I'm going to ask for your help to uh, finalize um, this series. So today the first thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the graphics that I've created to date and then we're going to dissect one of the graphics. I'm going to show you how I created it in GT Title Designer. The last episode in this series is going to be how to control uh, this graphic package through vMix UTC. Okay, to get started, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, the main layout. Of, and this is what it looks like. Let me go ahead and bring everything uh, into view. And these are the different graphics that I've created so far. I have one that says Cricket Lower Third. And this is the main one uh, that kind of shows the matchup. Then I have another graphic. Uh, well, I'll just go ahead and show you these graphics as we're going through. Okay, there's the first graphic, and that's the one that I just call the quick, uh, the cricket lower third. And this is the one that we're actually going to uh, kind of do a deep dive on today. And what this one does is it kind of sets, just sets the scene for us. It tell us, tells us who the uh, two combatants are. It tells us where the event is taking place. It gives us the logos of both the teams. And then it also inserts this little scoreboard. Okay, the next graphic is this one right here. And this is the one that I call our, uh, the batter graphic. And this will have the same information. It'll have the same scoreboard on there, um, but it'll also, it'll have the two batters and it'll show what the batters have done so far. As you can see right here, uh, for this first uh, batter, uh, it shows that he has 27 runs and uh, one wicket. And then on batter two, it shows that he has 16 runs and two wickets. It's also set up, uh, this is indicating uh, who is currently uh, batting, but we can toggle that. Uh, this right here is a live text field. You can put in whatever you want. Uh, this will show the current run rate, and this here will show the required run, run rate. And then we're going to go to our next one. This is the one that I've entitled the batter bowler graphic. Uh, this shows the batter, uh, the two batters, this shows the bowler, and then this shows the current run rate. And then this last one here shows the uh, bowler bio. And we'll just click through them all, and you can see how they change from one to the next. Okay, this is the control uh, center that I have in vMix UTC. It's only, like I said, it's probably only about 20% of the way done. Um, but if you're familiar with vMix UTC, uh, these are the, the buttons that I put together for the uh, different parts of the graphic. Over here, I've used NDI monitor to bring in my uh, program output. And, um, uh, and we'll go into this uh, in great detail once we have all the graphics uh, once we have all the graphics created. As we do the construction of these graphics, I'll allude to uh, some tutorials that we've done in the past so that I'm not uh, recreating a lot of the stuff that we've already done. Okay, this is what the entire graphic looks like in GT Title Designer. Uh, over here to the right, you can see uh, all of the different components. Uh, what we have on both ends are uh, just representation of logos for each one of the teams. Uh, right here in the middle, we have the two team names. And then this right here is actually the venue. Over here is portions of the scoreboard. Okay, so to start with, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, point you to a uh, tutorial that we did not too long ago. It's called uh, Working with Gradients, how we made the background for this particular component right here. So what we did is we went up to where it says rectangle. We clicked on rectangle, and then we made us a rectangle like this. 
And then what we're going to do, as you can see right here, we're going to skew uh, this right side of the rectangle. So we're going to go under effects. And we're going to skew it like that. I normally use 21. So let's go ahead and put uh, negative 21 in there. And then what I did is I brought it over here all the way, you, you, this other uh, angled portion of it, I brought it all the way to the end so that it looks like it's going to be a 90 degree angle on this left side. And that's when I go to home and under color fill, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on gradient. And then we're going to add some stops. So we're going to add five stops. Or actually, we added six. Let's get one rid of one of them. No, nope, actually, we only added five. Gosh, can you tell I'm tired? Okay, so on the two end stops, we're going to make them the same color. So we're going to click these three buttons here. It brings up our color palette. And we're going to go with this. Let's go with this color right here. And we're going to click OK. I'm going to do the same thing on the end. I'm going to click on the dots. Come back with that color. Click OK. And then on this one right here, we're going to make it just a little bit lighter. So I clicked on that same one, uh, that same block that we've been using. But I'm going to bring the red down. Actually, I'm going to bring the red up. just a smidge and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this so I remember what that is so we're going to say okay and then we're going to come to this one right here we're going to click that we're going to get rid of what's in there and we're going to paste what we just put as the other endpoint we're going to put that in here click okay then we're going to go to this one right here and uh, let's just go ahead and, and stick with that color for both of those. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's similar, not bad. As you can see around the edge of it, we have a, uh, a border, and this is where the border comes from. So we'll click on color, and you can kind of see where the, it kind of has a border logo there to give you a hint of where the border is. So we'll come over here and we're gonna click gray, and let's make this border start off at three not big enough let's go ahead and make it five and i think that's going to work for us so then what we did is we brought in the logo so when you bring in a logo i don't want it to spill out over the border we just put in here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a little rectangle here And you can see, you can see that I have it close to that bordering edge, but I don't have it over that edge because I do want that border, I do like that border edge and I want it to stay in the final graphic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to bring the opacity almost all the way down. Let's, let's leave it around two or three. And what I'm going to name this right here, rename this, let's call this mask for logo example. So what I'm going to do now when I bring in the logo, I'm going to mask it with this box right here. And that's going to allow us to keep the border uh, on this first piece right here. So let's go ahead and let's just bring in, I got a whole bunch of logos. Okay, I'm going to bring in this one. This is actually a new promotion that we just started with. It's uh, They're called uh, uh, King of Kickboxing. It's a kickboxing promotion that we do. So when you bring it in, it normally comes in pretty large. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it down some. Okay, let's make it bigger. And I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger so you can see what this whole masking thing is all about. 
Okay, so I have this centered over top of it, and you can look and see uh, that it's actually spilling uh, over that border that we created. So what I'm gonna do on this image is I'm going to go up here to where it says masking, and we're gonna come down to this mask that we used that said mask for logo example and click on that. And as you can see, it only reveals the parts that's in that mask. So the parts that spilled out over that border are no longer spilling out over the border. Everything is uh, confined uh, within that masked area. So that's how we did the first part right there. The second part, we go up and we uh, lo uh, create another rectangle. And we bring that rectangle almost the full width. And then we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to, uh, oops, I'm going to go to effects again, and we're going to skew it. And this time we're going to skew it on both sides. So we're going to have negative 21. And it might just be a little bit big. There we go. And so we're going to make the this entire rectangle here. Uh, we're going to make it gray. So we're going to go up to home. Then we're going to go up to color. And then we're just going to make it this color gray right here just for demonstration purposes uh, one thing i will mention anytime you click on the name of that particular element so i'm going to click on rectangle two if you click on that then you can use your arrow keys uh, to do some fine adjustment so i'm going to do that to bring it over a little bit closer to that first element that we made we're going to make a whole bunch of rectangles uh, for all these other components right here so what you would do is you would just go to a rectangle you make a rectangle then you would go to effects, you're going to skew it, and then you're going to change it to whatever color you want. So we're going to change this one just for demonstration purposes. Uh, we're going to change it to blue. So we're going to go to home, we're going to go to color, and we're going to go to blue. Then I'm going to click on rectangle no number three, which is the title of this rectangle. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys to get it positioned exactly where I want it. So that's all right, right there. I'm not using any gradients on these rectangles or anything. I'm just using a solid background color. As if you watched my tutorial on gradients, one of the things that I mentioned is uh, with um, on VMix 25, you're able to change the color background, but that color does not work on gradients. And then that tutorial, I showed you a workaround that you can use uh, that does kind of allow you to do a um, color, a background color change with a gradient. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste bring that over here and you can change the um, then you can change the size of it by just grabbing on uh, one of these boxes here you get the uh, double arrows that show up and you can grab it and make it whatever size you need to and that's how I made uh, the remainder of, of all these um, little rectangles right here now to put these um, put to put the wording and the numbers and any of the text in here what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to the um, ABC or the text block right here and you'll do the same thing you will just pull it over uh, to the area that you want and on all these I believe I used impact so you would go up to font you would go up to impact I always center it in the middle uh, left to right and in the middle up and down and that's probably a little bit large. So let's make it 24. Oops, that's not, that doesn't look like that's going to be big enough. Let's make it 28. And then let's change the text fill color to white. Now, one thing that I'm not doing because I'm going about this kind of quickly is over here on the side you can see where it says image one rectangle two rectangle three rectangle four text box one these are all the items that we just created if you look down here in the graphic that i created uh, in the labeling uh, for this graphic that i created earlier these descriptions are all very specific and you want to make sure you have your your description very specific because when you go back a little bit later and you're mapping this graphic or you're adding it to vmix utc you want to know exactly what component that you're dealing with so you want to make these as 
descriptive as you can. But just for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm going through it very quickly and I'm just, and I'm not renaming the components. And then you get to the other end of the graphic. Now, one thing that I, that I'll, I do along the way is on this one right here, I'm going to click on mask, mask for a logo example. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to click on image one, and then I'm going to click on rectangle one. And then I'm going to go up to here where it says create group layer, and it's going to make all these items a layer. Now this sometimes happens to me and I'm not really sure why, but sometimes you have to go back and you have to remask that image so that it's not spilling out over the border. And that's what I did right there. So the reason that I'm showing you how to make this layer is I'm going to right click on this layer and I'm going to click copy. And then I'm going to right click on the layer again and I'm going to hit paste. And you notice layer two changed to layer three. So I'm going to bring this layer all the way here on the other end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up. All right, then I'm going to click on layer three and I'm seeing now I can move it all the components at one time instead, instead of having to move each one of them. And I'm going to go ahead and click on rectangle three and I'm going to go ahead and extend this out of the area so it looks like that both of these endpoints are flat. Now, if I wanted to change this um, image right here, I would just click on the image, right click, and click on browse. Let's find another image. Here's one. And then I'm gonna have to go back and I'm gonna have to click on the image. And then I'm gonna have to click on the mask. And I'm gonna have to change it to where it says mask for logo, uh, logo example one. And there we go. You can see where it masks it uh, into that area there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and make some other rectangles real quick. And to change the color on this, like I said, you just go to home, you go to color fill. We're going to change this one to this color right here. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Uh, we're also going to be adding text to all of these. And we're just going to be up here using uh, this text box right here. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. I'll go, I'll go ahead uh, real quickly and show you the other graphics. This one here, uh, again, is a lower third for the batters. This one here is the, uh, what I call the batter bowler graphic. It shows the batters and then it also has an inset uh, for the bowler and shows what the current run rate is. And then this last one that I have is actually a uh, bowler bio. All right, I hope you found this tutorial entertaining as we uh, start down the road uh, building our Cricut scoreboard. And like I said, this is something that's going to have to be a collaboration. Uh, so I'm going to need some help as we're going forward. In our next tutorial, I'm actually going to change things up a little bit. As I was looking at, at what we've done, uh, most of these graphics are, are basically the same thing. We're just creating uh, rectangles and then we're putting, uh, we're adding some type of color to the rectangle and then we're adding text to that rectangle. So and I, I don't need to keep doing that. That's, that's something that's very easy to do. And if you watch me do it one time, uh, you'll be able to figure it out. I think what I'm gonna start doing uh, with the next tutorial is I'm gonna show you a little bit more on this right here, which is our VMIX UTC layout. And I'm gonna show you what I have so far and how I, how I put together what I put together. And then that will give you an idea of how I do the scoring so that for someone who actually knows how the game is scored, uh, you would be able to use these techniques to go ahead and take it a little bit further and complete the layout. So thanks so much for watching. I always appreciate it. Make sure you do give us a thumbs up and a like, and please subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. Thank you very much.